as it said in the Bible, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Consider this truth. Joseph Conrad wrote, A man's real life is that accorded to him in the thoughts of other men by reason of respect or natural love. And it was Charles Darwin who believed the highest possible stage in moral culture is when we recognize that we ought to control our thoughts. Hello once again, I'm Don Jackson. But where do our thoughts come from? And where do our thoughts go when we sleep? Something to think about with the heartbeat of the Internet. Louisa May Alcott wrote, A little kingdom I possess, where thoughts and feelings dwell, and very hard the task I find of governing it well. According to the Book of Knowledge, where do thoughts come from is the question of questions, and there is no real answer to it, except only just so much as will prevent us from believing false answers to it. We certainly know that the thoughts depend on the brain. If we are to do our duty to ourselves, we must regard the brain as the place where the real self lives. We must not poison it. We must not abuse it by depriving it of due rest, which we call sleep. And we should even think of every one of the other parts of our body as no more than its servants. The brain is the house of thought. but. It is not thought itself. And though there is no harm in saying for convenience that the brain thinks, yet that will not do as an answer to our question. There is something which thinks, a something which knows, cannot be felt or seen or cut up, for it lies underneath all that we can see and cut up. The word substance means standing underneath, underneath the deepest that we can see. And so, when you ask where the thoughts come from, I can only reply that they come from the thinking substance, the something that thinks. One of my original Christmas stories about a mysterious visitor is in the new Chicken Soup for the Soul collection, Christmas in Canada, in bookstores as of October the 14th. Mine is the very first story in the chapter about angels. My thanks to the best editor a writer could have, Janet Matthews, and her co-editor, Amy Newmark, for allowing me the opportunity to be a part of this very special edition. And I think, you know, it'll make the perfect holiday gift for someone on your list. Christmas in Canada Sir Thomas Beecham said, The function of music is to release us from the tyranny of conscious thought. So next up, another question. Where do our thoughts go when we sleep? And again from the Book of Knowledge. Perhaps we should think of the brain as the instrument of the something that thinks, as the violin is the instrument of the violinist. This, at any rate, is a beautiful idea, which was expressed by a great Greek more than 2,000 years ago. When you ask where your thoughts go in your sleep, it is perhaps as if you had asked where does the music go when the violin or organ is not being played upon. When we are asleep, the brain, or rather the highest part of the brain, is not acting. It remains alive, of course, and has the needs of a living thing. It requires pure blood, which is one reason why we should sleep in pure air. But it is resting, as the violin rests in its case. So no thought comes from it. We are never wholly asleep, however. Part of our bodies is always working, and even part of the brain. Sometimes we can be sure that 
though the self we know is asleep. Yet part of the self which we do not know so well is not asleep. For men and women have awakened with the answer to questions which they could not answer the night before. Many cases like this show that sometimes thinking goes on in our brains even when we are asleep, or when, at any rate, the greater part of us is asleep. End quote. I will always remember a line from one of the episodes of The X-Files. A dream is a question we haven't figured out how to ask. So, what makes us think? Again, from the Book of Knowledge. In the first place, we think because it is in our nature to think. We are thinking beings, and this it is which distinguishes us from all the other creatures. We have brains so made that they are capable of being thought with, but we are very apt not to use our powers just as the owner of a violin may leave it long in its case. It has been said that men think very little and very seldom. Many of us are too much taken up with the business of life. We stop asking questions, though when we were children, we used to ask many. This is a very great pity. We think we are interested, there must be something to start us moving. When we grow up and have to earn our living, we often cease to be interested in many things that really do matter and simply stop thinking about them. But it is a pity we do not think about the best things." End quote. Samuel Taylor Coleridge, in his poem, Love, wrote, All thoughts, all passions, all delights, Whatever stirs this mortal frame, all are but ministers of love and feed his sacred flame. William Wordsworth wrote, In that sweet mood when pleasant thoughts bring sad thoughts to the mind. So, can animals think? The Book of Knowledge goes on to answer this. The answer to this question depends entirely on what we mean by the word think. We should not say think when we mean feel and we should not use the word thoughts to mean feelings, as nearly everyone does. To think is really to put one thing and another together in our minds so as to make a link between them. And when the two things are linked together like this, that is a thought. To feel that you want your dinner is not to think, but to say to yourself, I am hungry, is a thought because you have put together in your mind your idea of yourself and the idea you have of that feeling which we call hunger. So, if we use the word properly, the answer must be that animals can scarcely think at all, but that some of the higher animals, such, for instance, as dogs, do, beyond a doubt, act sometimes in a way which can only possibly mean that they have somehow put two and two together in their minds, and to do that is to think. The answer then is that some animals at any rate are capable, though only in a very small degree, of doing what we should certainly call thinking if they were men and not animals in whom we saw the results of it.
We are thinking thoughts during this edition of the Heartbeat of the Internet. So what exactly is a thought? We should always make a point of using the word thought in the strict way to mean the putting together of two ideas. Tom is good is a thought. It puts together the idea that Tom and the idea of goodness. We say that there is a relation between Tom and the state of goodness. Tom is not good is another thought, asserting another kind of relation between Tom and goodness. So it has been said that thinking is relationing. If the relationing corresponds to the relation of the facts, then the thinking is true. If not, it is false. Of course, we cannot help asking ourselves what it is that does this relationing or thinking. Whether rightly or wrongly, we all do it in both ways. Some people would say that it is your brain that thinks, but I will say that it is your brain by which you think. The new Chicken Soup for the Soul Collection, Christmas in Canada, is in stores as of the 14th of October. An original story of mine is in the book, and I want to take this opportunity to thank the editors Amy Newmark and Janet Matthews for this tremendous opportunity. And thank you as well to Janet Matthews for her very kind words about my writing in the introduction to the book. The book will make the ideal holiday gift with 101 powerful stories about Christmas and Hanukkah. I think it's the kind of book you'll want to read by the fire, and I hope you will like my first published work and consider it for those very special people on your Christmas and holiday gift-giving list. Thomas Hobbes wrote, The secret thoughts of a man run over all things, holy profane, clean, grave, and light, without shame or blame. The Book of Knowledge also asks, do we think in words? This question fits in with what we have been saying. We can think very simple thoughts, but they really must be very simple indeed, without the use of words, and to that extent animals may think, and sometimes do. They think without words just as far as we can, but this is almost nothing. Practically all our thinking is done in words. What we must try to remember is that words are good servants, but bad masters. Too many people allow words to lead them astray. Instead of words being instruments for their minds to think with, they are chains in which their minds are bound. Every word has a meaning. That is to say, it stands for something, and words are not worth anything in themselves, except, perhaps, that some of them make beautiful sounds. Henri Bergson wrote, Allow me to furnish the interior of my head as I please, and I shall put up with a hat like everybody else's. James Harvey Robinson believed, We find it hard to believe that other people's thoughts are as silly as our own, but they probably are. And one final thought from the Book of Knowledge. Can we think without words? There are other kinds of what is really thinking, where the things which are put together or related are not words, but something else. Some, for instance, in doing what is called algebra, can think without using words at all. Instead of thinking in words or figures, they can think in lines and angles and curves and find out all sorts of wonderful things in this way. 
Euclid could think in this way about as well as anyone who ever lived. Other men and women can think in sounds. One of the greatest musicians who ever lived, Beethoven, wrote some of the most marvelous music in the world, which will be listened to as long as men and women have ears, and he did this long after he had become stone deaf. He put the ideas of these sounds together in his head. He could think in notes as easily as you and I can think in words. End quote. You know, there's an old English saying that states, Around the world, thoughts shall fly in the twinkling of an eye. In the TV series Star Trek The Next Generation, there was an alien character named Troy who was the ship's counselor. She was an empath and could read the thoughts and feelings of those who sought out her advice on personal matters, as well as for the captain's benefit when he needed an edge in delicate negotiations. Now, you might think that the ability to read another's thoughts would be very helpful in business and personal relationships. It was beneficial to her work, but it came with an awful price. It was not so easy for her to turn off the thoughts of the thousand or so crew members who populated the ship. Imagine hearing the thoughts of each individual in a crowd of people. To her, it sounded like noise or tinnitus, a nasty buzzing in the middle of her head that she could rarely escape. A sound that could drive any sane person crazy. But in reality, we are somewhat intuitive, and I'm sure you will agree that what I just said is right. We are right 35% of the time when we try to read the thoughts or feelings of our married partners. On average, though, there is only 20% accuracy when trying to read other people, and no one has ever scored above 60%. Most of us have thoughts we wish we could make disappear. They have the nagging ability to turn up at the most inopportune times. These may also include irrational thoughts. These are the ones that can terrorize our minds, getting us to imagine all kinds of worries that may never come true. In conclusion, one final thought, if you will. William Ellery Channing wrote, Thought, intelligence, is the dignity of a man, and no man is rising but in proportion as he is learning to think clearly and forcibly, or directing the energy of his mind to the acquisition of truth. And quote. Something to think about. Good night, sweet dreams. I'm Don Jackson.